This is the Miyuki Mile. I'm your host, Miyuki Takara. Thank you for joining me. How's it? Um, today I'd like to talk about the epilogue to the Casey Anthony uh, trial. But first, I do have a couple of shout outs for you guys. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome JJ Pokes All to the Miyuki Boat. Um, he puts up videos of, uh, of Wi Fi battles and Pokemon battles from, uh, with uh, other players. And actually, he's pretty good. Some of his strategies are. Spot on. I, I would actually highly check him out. Um, I would also like to welcome Typhlosion Red 08. Um, he's recently been putting up uh, videos called Pokemon Bros. O uh, Pokemon Brothers. Um, they they're pretty good, broken English, but that would tell me that he's from a uh, a foreign country that doesn't really speak English too well. So really, it's not that hard to look past. Actually, pretty good. Um, so, Casey Anthony. Little history about uh, what uh, she's been going through. Um, so, back in 2008, uh, her daughter Kaylee went missing. And according to testimony, Kaylee was, uh, was found dead on the side of the road in August of 08 after not being reported for 31 days. Yeah, 31 days it took Casey to report Kaylee missing. The body was taken to coroner, uh, to a coroner, and according to testimony, no cause or manner of death was ever found. And supposedly, uh, Kaylee had actually drowned uh, when she died. Eventually, this whole media storm took place, and I do have a problem with that, and that's actually going to be uh, put up in part two, which will actually be in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll explain why at the end of this mile. But a um, whole media storm uh, began over the disappearance of Kaylee, the reappearance of Kaylee, how, and uh, supposedly how she died. Uh, Casey was later arrested on murder charges. And the media started presuming her guilty. So after a few years, Casey finally uh, finally went to trial. Uh, investigation and all that crap. Uh, the media wouldn't let this die. So Casey finally had her day in court and she was acquitted of all charges. You know, little, little five cent version, Reader's Digest version of everything because I'm sure you don't need to be reminded as to what happened. If you live in America, you, you know the name Casey Anthony. I knew the name Casey Anthony and I didn't have to hear it from my friend after three years. I knew who Casey Anthony was. So she was acquitted. She ended up spending a few more days in jail after her acquittal because she was found guilty of lying to authorities. And she was sentenced to four years, though released after two years uh, behind bars on good behavior and parole. I would be shocked if this wasn't planned by the judge. The jury comes back with a verdict of guilty on lying to the police. Okay, time spent. I would be shocked if that wasn't on the judge's mind. Just shocked. But to be honest, I actually think it was the right decision on the part of the on the part of the jury. Now, don't get me wrong. I do believe that Casey killed Kaylee. I really do. I believe she is guilty of first degree murder. But, and, and again, I, I also want to stress that I'm not the most educated in this. Alright, I'm going to try and get somebody that's more educated on, uh, on this topic to, uh, to come with me. Don't hold your breath. It's highly unlikely that's going to happen. But, I, I, I'm going off of what I know. And... I, I'm not the most educated. Don't uh, and that's one of the reasons this could actually take a couple of weeks to uh, to complete uh, this whole series. Again, don't hold your breath. But um, I do believe that Casey killed Kaylee. I, I also believe that it was the right the right verdict. 
The reason I believe it was, it was the right verdict be, is because the district attorney, they couldn't even provide a cause of death, let alone a manner of death. So they couldn't actually say that this was murder. And because they couldn't say this was murder, it did raise reasonable doubt. If I were on that jury, there, there were actually two lines during closing arguments that I really want to poke at, uh, from the defense's closing arguments that I really want to poke at. Um, but they would, have, they would have gotten a guilty verdict from me because of those two lines. But if I weren't emotionally tied to what that, uh, what that defense attorney said and absolutely pissed off at what he said, I would have returned with not guilty. Because the prosecution's evidence was just weak. Okay, sure. She acted in absolutely fucked up ways. Probably more fucked up was the fact that she didn't report her daughter missing for 31 days. If my, if my child didn't return home for, you know, a day or two, I'd report, it, I'd report them missing. Because uh, under federal law, they do have to be gone for 24 hours to be called a missing person. They really do. So after day two, I'd probably report my, uh, my child missing. She didn't report hers missing for 31 days. Absolutely fucked up. Yes, I'll give you that. But no manner of death. And it's basically what the coroner does is they perform the autopsy, look for a cause of death. And by that I mean, if it's not obvious, you know, like a gunshot wound to the back of the head, Judith Barcy, uh, Judith Barcy, they have to search the body for a cause of death. They couldn't actually do that. Then they search all around the body for any evidence, i.e. bruises, uh, breaks, breaks in the bloodstream, um, food items, uh, could, uh, uh, could provide a manner of death. Um... Because they don't actually leave the body. And if there's poison in a food item, you can actually see it. Bruises on a neck would actually, uh, would actually uh, suggest that the victim was strangled. The problem is they couldn't find anything. So not only was there no cause of death, there was no manner of death. So it couldn't be... It couldn't be uh, portrayed as an accident, it couldn't be portrayed as murder, because the coroner didn't actually know. I want to stress that. I want to stress that big time. The coroner didn't actually know. So the evidence was weak. I truly believe it was the right verdict. Now, shortly afterwards, protests and borderline riots happened. Um, there were death threats. Uh, mailed to Casey Anthony and her family and the Orlando district attorney did say that they'd prosecute only the most serious you know if, if I had sent a death threat to Casey Anthony chances are I wouldn't be prosecuted but somebody living in Orlando saying you know I'm going to kill Casey Anthony yeah chances are they're going to be prosecuted for conspiracy com to commit murder now there's a difference between saying I wish you were dead and saying I'm going to kill you there is a legal difference. I don't think any... Uh, I, I, I honestly don't think either one of those should be said by anybody to Casey Anthony, her family, or even the jurors. If you're going to... If you're going to funnel your anger to anybody, do so to the district attorney. Because they couldn't prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. I mean... How hard could it be to say Kaylee Anthony died, the coroner said it was murder, and Casey did it? The media hype convicted Casey before her day in court. The district attorney was so incompetent that he couldn't even fucking do that. That's why I think that, that our anger is funneled in the wrong direction. It needs to go to the district attorney. Casey Anthony only defended herself in the court of law. Legal right. The jurors only took the evidence and came back with what I believe is the right verdict. 
not guilty. It's the district attorney that pisses me clean the fuck off. Because he couldn't actually say, he couldn't come out and fucking say, Casey Anthony killed, his, killed her daughter. I mean, how elementary is that? Casey Anthony killed her daughter. He couldn't even fucking say that. So if I were to send any hate mail, it'd be to that fucking fucked up DA. I'm so fucking pissed off that I can't even talk straight. Because I do believe Casey Anthony killed her daughter. Now, another problem I have with the epilogue of what's going on are the near riots. Because... One thing I want to make very clear. A lot of people are pissed off at these jurors. And I, I can't state it enough. That anger is directed at the wrong place. Well, the one reason that makes me say that about the jurors is because you got to remember, in a jury trial, the final say goes to the jury. Yes, I'll give you that. The final say to a jury trial goes to the jury, not the judge, not the district attorney, not the defense attorney, not the defendant. It goes to the jury. Well, guess who the jury is made up of? The jury is made up of average people like you and me. You know, I've actually never served on a jury, but I have been called the jury duty. The jury system is made up of people like you and me, by the people for the people. And I know that does tie into part two of this and the problem I have with the media. But they did their job. That's all they were doing, their job. And how can you get pissed off at somebody just doing their job? Their legal job. I don't know about you, but I can't. As pissed off as I am that she's walking... I would actually say she is the white person's O.J. Simpson. And this isn't going to die. The media and the people out there aren't going to die. This is, this is playing out exactly like O.J. Simpson. Now, I'm a diehard Buffalo Bills fan. Diehard Buffalo Bills fan. I just wish they'd shut him out of their history. You know, like the WWE did Chris Benoit. America needs to shut Casey Anthony out of their history. But the problem is it's not going to happen. Because we're not going to let it happen. And I know that the stance that I'm going to take is not going to be reciprocated. After part two, I'm not going to talk Casey Anthony anymore. I don't care what you guys have to say. You're probably never going to hear me say the words Casey Anthony again. Because she's fucked up in the head. She killed her daughter because she wanted to be a partier. If anything, the only references to this case that you're going to hear after part two is going to be that fucked up DA. That incompetent DA. I mean, how fucking stupid is he? Casey Anthony killed her daughter, that's all. He couldn't even do that. Anyway, coming up next on the Mucky Mile, we're going to be listening to Dogfight by John Broomhall. This is the Interceptor theme song to XCOM, UFO Defense, UFO Enemy Unknown. Pick one. This is the PlayStation version. Not the best version out of the three. I would say the Sound Blaster version is better than this one. I just couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, and by the way, this song is still pretty kick-ass. And this is also the theme song that plays at the end of each of my uh, Let's Play videos. This is the entire theme song. And uh, coming up next time on the Meek Mile, the reason it's uh, one of the reasons it's going to take so long for me to finish uh, the Casey Anthony case is I recently heard about a law that may end up affecting me personally um, and my uh, YouTube channel. I I've been re I've been hounded by a lot of Pokemon fans lately. And chances are it's because of my Pokemon Leaf Green playthrough or my Pokemon Virgin Blue challenge. 
probably even both. But um, this bill, as it uh, as it stands right now, if it passes, I may end up having to shut uh, shut that down. And it, a lot of you Pokemon fans, it would also affect you as well. How? Well, let me put it to you this way. It's an unintended consequence. Pen, uh, Pendulet says it all the time. If you, uh, if you say there ought to be a law, chances are there oughtn't. This is one of those cases. That's what's coming up next. You're listening to the Meek Mile.